welcome. Welcome to Australia. Welcome to Australian Book Travels and welcome on our continuing journey through North East Victoria, where this week we find ourselves in the tourist town of Beechworth, which is within the municipality of the Shire of Indigo. According to the 2021 census, the town has a population of approximately 3,290. Beechworth is 284 kilometres northeast of Melbourne and 245 kilometres northeast of Bendigo. In a cool climate for the majority of the year, the town being of higher elevation does experience snowfall through winter. The average yearly rainfall is approximately 960 millimetres. Originally known as Mayday Hills prior to 1853, the town was renamed Beechworth in 1854. Indigenous people knew it and know it as Bamutha. At its peak during the Victorian gold rush in the 1850s, Beechworth had a population of approximately 30,000 people, hailing from the United States, the United Kingdom and China, living, working and prospecting in the area. In turn, industry in Beechworth expanded with tanneries, jewellers, schools, livestock sale yards, rail, breweries, boot makers, bakeries, hotels, a prison, a mental asylum, courthouse, town hall, police barracks, stagecoach companies, convents, powder magazines and various retail shops. In this video, we take a walk around the town visiting a bookshop or two. We take a stroll around the gardens dedicated to the Chinese community, walk alongside Silver Creek, visit an historic cemetery, and the long ago disused asylum. And then we take a look at the architecturally pleasing Art Deco nursing hostel, which is now an hotel. Let's begin. Beechworth Jail was built and opened in 1860 with 36 prisoners. By 1864, it housed 132. Built on the site of Beechworth's first stockade, it is one of nine panopticon prisons in Victoria, housing both male and female inmates. A medium security facility, it was witness to eight executions between 1865 and 1881. The famous and infamous bushranger, Ned Kelly, served six months at Beechworth in 1870 for assault and was again held in the prison in 1880 for his committal trial for murder. In 1918, the prison closed due to a lack of prisoners, reopening in 1925 until 1951 when it was used as a reformatory. In 1951, it became a training prison focusing on rehabilitation and education. It closed its doors for the final time in 2004.
The building facade that we're now driving past was once the Ovens Goldfield Hospital, built in 1857. The hospital had 100 beds and closed in 1940 when the entire building was demolished, but the facade was left as a reminder not only of the hospital's existence and dedication to community, but because of its classical, Palladian style with honey-coloured granite. Bilson's Brewery is Australia's oldest continuing beverage manufacturer, beginning on this site in 1865 by George Bilson, who travelled from the Californian goldfields to seek his fortune in the beverage making industry in Beechworth. Today, Bilson's makes delicious cordials, soda waters, beer and a range of spirits. Beechworth Cemetery on its 20-acre ground, like most cemeteries, holds incredible secrets and amazing history. With an increase of population in the mid to late 1800s due to the Victorian gold rush, the town and its surrounds lacked basic conveniences and sanitation. There were continual outbreaks of typhoid, measles, scarlet fever, dysentery and diphtheria between adults and children alike. Between 1853 and 1860, an average of one child per week died from one of these diseases. The first burials were recorded in 1853 at a location in Lower Stanley Road. By 1855, these bodies were exhumed and moved to the permanent cemetery now located in Lock Street. The iron gates and granite pillars were erected in 1888. Within the cemetery, there are dedicated sections to various religions, including a dedicated Chinese section with haunting and rare Chinese burning towers and altars, where approximately 2,000 Chinese are buried. The Victorian Heritage Database advises that the cemetery is the best garden cemetery in Victoria.
Hills Lunatic Asylum, now known as Beechworth Lunatic Asylum, was one of three largest such asylums in Victoria. It operated for 128 years from 1867 to 1995. Set in 260 acres, which is 106 hectares, with 67 buildings, many patients of the asylum never left alive. With 1,200 beds and 500 staff, there are more than 9,000 deaths recorded in the lifetime of the asylum. The ha-ha walls surrounding the buildings were built and organised in such a way so as to not look imposing or to suggest imprisonment. But the sloping ground leading to the ha-ha wall and away from it and the trench at the base of the wall prevented escape by patients. In such large grounds, the asylum was self-sufficient with a piggery, orchard, kitchen gardens, stables, barns, fields, tennis courts, oval, cricket pavilion, kiosk and theatre, and its own mortuary. Having closed in 1995, the buildings and grounds are now used for tourism and arts-based businesses. Ghost night tours are also run through the facility. The 19th century gardens are open to the public throughout the day and were originally planned and developed by one asylum patient by the name of Robert Coates. He was a landscape architect of the 1860s and described as one of the best landscape gardeners of the time. Mayday Hills has been declared architecturally significant by the Heritage Trust of Victoria with its Italian style buildings of the 1860s and surrounding cottages and its beautiful 19th century gardens. Lineker Art Deco Hotel, now on your screens, was once the Mayday Hills nursing hostel used by asylum nursing staff. Built in 1936 by architect Percy Everett, the facility closed in 1995. It is a 10 minute walk to Beechworth Town and like the asylum, it has heritage listed gardens. I'm rather partial to the Art Deco period and particularly appreciate the lines of this building. The building is elegant, simplistic and stylish.
highly populated with tourists throughout most of the year, Beechworth has retained and maintained an incredible amount of its historic buildings and locations. If you are ever in northeast Victoria, Beechworth is a town you are most likely to visit, and although the actual township is interesting and active, I recommend a stroll through its back streets and along its riverbanks and watercourses to truly get a feel for its people, its location, and its history. We have made a fleeting visit to Beechworth today, but next week we visit a town close by, which is the fifth town in this series exploring Northeast Victoria. Until then, happy reading and safe travels. Bye for now.